our first three title fights, Bellator 300, the gold rush, and ooh, what a rush it promises to be. Yeah, well, you can see the reach and everything the same, but it is the weight we got to talk about. Moral talked about it. Ali Malay was unable to make that 125 pound limit for the flyweight title, so at 126.6, she can win, but she cannot win the title. With the official introductions, here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and once again, welcome to Bellator 300 Live on Showtime. We open the night now with five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Flyweight World Championship. Tonight's world title fights are under the auspices of the California State Athletic Commission. Commissioner Peter Villegas, Chair, Executive Officer Andy Foster. And now, first, introducing the blue corner. At five foot four, weighing in 126.6 pounds, Bellator's first ever flyweight champion. Now, at number two in the rankings, stands with 13 professional victories, two losses, originally from Honolulu. She fights out of San Diego, California, <laughs> presenting the kingdom of Hawaii's Waihine Toho. And across the cage, the champion tonight fights out of the red corner at five foot six, weighing in 124.8 pounds in her third world title defense. She enters tonight undefeated inside the Bellator cage and brings a total of 19 professional victories, seven defeats by way of Okinawa, Japan. She fights out of San Diego, California. She is the reigning Bellator flyweight winner. Champion Liz Gorilla Carmu. And the referee in charge of the action, Blake Grice. Expect a clean fight. Obey my command. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves if you want. Good luck to you both. Bellator 300, the third flyweight champion, Liz Carmouche, set to make her third title defense against the inaugural champion, Alima Le McFarlane, who has never lost by knockout or submission. You ready? You ready? Fight! The bell and round one scheduled for five. When we asked Carmouche about this fight against her longtime friend, she said, and I quote, I like the idea of submitting her gently and putting her to sleep. No harm, no foul. We can both smile afterwards. Rather than coming out battered and beaten, but knowing the two of us, we're going to come out battered and beaten. Close quote. And for McFarland, John, she was quick to tell us. Ramush knows about that bad knee, her lead leg. Will she be attacking it early? It is the question, you know, Aline Lee has had a bad knee for a while, and it's, it has caused a change in her style, in what she's able to do, in the way she's able to take fights to the ground. So it has a big impact on her and what she does in the cage. We'll see what happens, but she believes that Liz Carmouche does not take getting hit very well. She believes that if she can put her hands in the middle of Liz Carmouche's face, it's going to change the way Liz is approaching this fight. Carmouche boasts victories over three women to hold major MMA titles. Valentina Shevchenko, Jessica Andrade, and the woman she beat to become Bellator champion, Juliana Velasquez, looking to make it four tonight against Max Farley. Carmouche eight and two since dropping down to the flyweight division back in December of 2017. 
this is the division that is made for this car moves. 125 pounds. Oh, she's made for 135. She was a very small 135er. She's always been physically strong. She's gifted. She's got fast hands. And McFarlane told us that she came in looking to land strikes that there's no such thing as easy sparring with Liz Carmouche. It's always hard sparring, and they've had their battles in the gym, but now this one is legit for legacy for, well, for Carmouche wanting to hold on to the gold, and for McFarlane again, this is the second time in the last three fights she's missed weight. It is the second time. It's a problem because, you know, you sign that contract, you're a professional, you're supposed to make weight. But I take a look at, and I give her a little bit of a pass in the fact that Alina Lay puts her attention to so many things and is so involved politically with things, especially in Hawaii, I can understand why that happened. She flew out a lot of people from Maui to be a part of this event here tonight and has done a great job representing her native Hawaii as she Crashes the pocket with a, a couple of right hands, leads with the left, lands the right on Carmouche. That's exactly what she wants to do in this fight. That's what she believes is going to change the course of what Liz wants to do. Now, a lot of people thought that this would also be something we'd see for a, a long time. The fact that these two do know each other so well. and. And would it be a big feeling out process? And when it comes to the feeling out process, John, there's a lot more to it than just its literal connotation. Yeah, well, there is, but you do figure that, and see, this is where it gets into it. Josh talked about, you know, when you have someone that you have trained with, you know how hard they hit. You know all the things about what they're good at, what, where they're not, where you think you can take advantage of them. But it's also, these two have not trained together for years now. Right. So. It has been a while, and they have both changed a little bit, so there's going to have to be that feeling out process. This arena, the Pachanga Arena, shares the same parking lot with the gym that Liz Carmouche owned her skills at, and for McFarlane, owns her own 10th Planet franchise in Oceanside. But yeah, they haven't trained for, for years together. In fact, uh, Carmouche moving to Tennessee from San Diego with her young family, and Training in Virginia Beach. Lead single off of Drake's for all the dogs, by the way. I know you'd be interested to know that. Big John is. I know the fans would like to see this turn into a bit of a dog fight, but again, the respect, the knowledge, not wanting to make a mistake, and yet, this is a prize fight, John. It is, and, and look, I, I know both ladies well. They're going to get after it. It's just a matter of. It's going to take one starting to take the advantage, and the other one's going to say, oh, no, I'm not going to let that happen. And that's when you're going to start to see things really heat up. We saw Carmouche blitz Kana Watanabe, much more aggressive start against Juliana Velasquez in the rematch, and yet a very cautious start here to this, our first fight of the main card of Bellator 300. Ah, here we go. Fight! Give the judges something to score. Referee Blake Rice giving his instructions to begin round two, and they come out much more aggressively. And remember, Alima Lay McFarland said that Carmouche is like a shark. She doesn't like getting hit in the nose. I don't know if anyone does come to think of it, but in training, that's what she noted. <laughs> no one likes getting punched in the nose. And we saw AJ Matthews giving instructions to Alima Lay McFarland, spent a lot of time training with him. In fact, it was here at Bellator 131 where Lima Lay McFarland first watched MMA. That night, AJ Matthews reported a TKO victory. So full circle with all of the history here in San Diego between these two to have this fight take place here at this venue on this night. And there's McFarland coming forward with the right blocked by Carmouche. Nice heavy leg kick by Liz Carmouche. Missed with the strikes up top. Those are the moments when you're seeing Alimale make that kind of bull rush forward. That's when Liz just needs to use her footwork, step off to the side, pick a spot, and attack it.
first round was very close statistically because, again, as the referee mentioned, give something yep. for the judges to score. John, how did you come up with a score in that first five? Well, I'm just being honest. I just thought that McFarland was just a little bit busier, not much. Oh, nice one shoot from Carmouche. And in my opinion, just a couple more shots, and there wasn't anything that was telling by either. To the lead leg, and Ramush comes in with a sweeping right hand across the jaw of McFarlane. Wide one two by McFarlane, blocked by Carmouche. Neither looking to take it to the ground. And after all, we mentioned about 10 Planet Jiu Jitsu in the creative grab games. This one is staying in the stand up, not even one takedown attempt yet. All that work on the ground, all those hours on the mat. And now I'm just going to slug it out. And in fact, uh, McFarlane, day before the fight was announced with all that was going on with the fires in Maui, she's just been uh, elevated to a BJJ black belt starting at this camp. And when you win the championship with something we've never seen before in the game, that's it, son. The Dead Orchard. Lingle has always been a very good ground technician. I think both women Look at it like, I, I know how good the other one is on the ground. It's going to be very difficult for me to get an advantage there. And that's why you're going to see this thing actually stay in the stand-up. Karmush has already taken 20% of McFarland's uh, purse because of uh, McFarland missing weight. So now we'll see it pick up here in the clinch. Good. And oh, the right hand by Karmush bouncing off the face of McFarland. There's a couple of shots landed by both there, but the best one being by Liz Karmush. And now Carmouche from the South Boston walking down McFarlane in circles. Leaving a lot of open area in between those punches is McFarlane. coming off that tough fight against one of their common opponents there in Watanabe. We saw what Karmouche was able to do with Karmouche. Watanabe blitzed him. Just decimated her quickly, 31 seconds, I believe. This is one of those performances that we were looking for from, from Ms. Karmouche because many times she was taking her time. She had to have some urgency and she went after it and put her away. And she, she, and to do that. Well, she's, as we mentioned, got the four consecutive finishes at the highest level, defend, winning the title, defending the title, and now 30 seconds left in the second. And it remains a, a sparring session between Liz Carmouche and Alina Lay McFarlane. But, uh, at least uh, Liz in this one has elevated the volume of her output, which I think is making a difference in the round four. But and there's a right hand that landed. Well, in my opinion, both of them are being too cautious here. You're taking a look and you said, I know that both of you have more to go after it more. It's almost like I don't, I don't want to lose to you, so I don't want to take. I don't want to take the big chance. Oh, oh. McFarland is off up on her back. Well, that and was, already, you see that he's hurt. having issues maintaining the foundation. McFarland with issues with her knee. We've talked about it, and now with some adversity here in round three. 
And there, Karmouche attacking the leg. And it's quite obvious, yes. Lee Malay McFarlane has been compromised. Yeah, absolutely, you can see. Leg definitely, that left, left leg. Just saw a replay of it, definitely gives in. And there's the cap kick from Karmouche. Towards it. Looks like it could be an MCL. PCL type injury the way it went, but she's definitely gonna have problems for the rest of the fight stepping correctly with that leg. And this is what you would expect, you know, Liz Carmouche, she's gotta step it up and start taking advantage of it. It is a contest, it is a fight, and you're there to win the fight, even though that is someone that in the world you really like. McFarlane using a strike to try to change levels, unable to take Carmouche down. And that's what's going to occur when you injure that knee. That and that's the first takedown attempt. You don't have that drive. You're not able to push off of it and have the explosion. She's the one that's initiating these engagements. It's more Liz Carmouche just moving away, defending, not really countering. Even though Liz is the one that has done the damage in her act. Under two minutes left in the third. Bush, unable or maybe even unwilling to take advantage of the fact that that lead leg has been damaged, but McFarland doing her best to avoid the attack, stay out of the range while trying to find a way to score. Under 90 seconds left in the third. She's doing a nice job. She's really switching back and forth from orthodox to southpaw. Trying to get different looks. She needs to attack more, in my opinion. She has an advantage. Don't let that advantage walk away. We have reached the final minute of the third round. McFarland, 4 of 27 in strikes in this round. Carmouche, 11 of 52. And there, McFarland gingerly moving with that lead leg, unstable. 45 left in the round. See, this is where, if you're Liz Carmouche, you really start putting pressure on a lead leg. That leg. She's doing that now with those there kicks. You go. That leg is there for you to take out. Once you have that leg compromised the way it is. Be very difficult for him to land with any power. And Ali Malay McFarland looking for the takedown, but the clock will expire. As we resume action, we've reached the championship round. Again, Liz Carmouche, win or a draw, retains the title as McFarlane upsets the defending champion. The title will be vacated after McFarlane missed weight. Here's where Alina Lane just needs to start biting down on the mouth. You start making it ugly. Get after her. Put pressure on her, get inside the range, and start just putting shots on Liz Carmouche. And if you can get to that takedown, work towards the takedown. McFarlane lunging in. Again, that lead leg gets chopped down by Carmouche. But Carmouche doesn't pounce on McFarlane. Uh, you can see, and this is where I said, when it comes to the ground game, they're, they're very close, and both know how good each other is. So why am I going to go to where I believe I 
and even instead of being in the stand up where I think I have the advantage. It's actually smart fighting by Liz Carpenter. And again, McFarlane and then Harry Rose was dropped by that low kick from the champion, Carmouche. So that has become the focus of her attack. The lead leg that has been injured, re-injured, I should say. She can yep. get after it. You can't expect anything more, man. She oh, she just absolutely biting down and going forward, trying to make something happen. This crowd rallying behind her. Of course, both of them with lots of support here again. San Diego, a longtime home base for folks. But most recently moving to Tennessee. Come on, girls, engage. Referee Grice asking them to engage. And the Kicks continue to the lead leg of Alima Lay McFarland. She puts weight on it gingerly. But there is no quit, and the eliminator has never been finished. Armush intercepted that attack by McFarland. Final minute. being played here in round number four. See, right here with Liz Carter, she's going to go back and look. You can't just sit there and be defensive and, and not attack. You've got to go after it. Your job is to finish your opponent. She has that ability. Yep, she's got four straight finishes. Finished fighter based upon that play. And as we begin the fifth and final round, Carmusha's five stoppage wins in the Bellator women's flyweight division are tied for the second most in the division's history behind Ready? guess who? Alima Lay McFarland, seven. Bye. Farland continues to come forward, John, but yep. unable to do much, and now she is hurt, and it's over. And she is stopped tonight by the defending champ, Liz Carmouche. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. 
Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end of 17 seconds into round number five. But the winner by TKO, she is still Bellator Flyweight World Champion, Liz Gorilla Carmo. And now John McCarthy will speak with the champ. I'm here with still flyweight world champion Liz Carmouche. Liz, how difficult was that fight for you mentally to take on someone that you respected, you trained with, and you've cared for in the past? I'd be lying if I said it wasn't difficult. Of course, it's like it's a friend and I know we would throw hard, but that's the last friend. There are plenty of other friends I'd be much better at coming in here with than Alima. Everything that she did for the 125 division is the reason that the women are here in Bellator. If it wasn't for Alima, I wouldn't be here. Nobody else would. So thank you, Alima. Hats off to you. She was hurt, and she didn't stop, so. You, you hurt her leg. You took her leg out. You saw that she was having problems, and you continually, you kept going back to it, but then you would stop. Did you have some kind of compassion that you are like, I don't want to hit it again, but then you went back to doing it? It was also that I knew that if I made a mistake and I timed it incorrectly, she'd fall on the takedown and utilize that for grappling where she feels safe and good. And I didn't want to go into her waters. I wanted to keep it standing where I felt confident I could finish the fight. When you look at the flyweights that are out there, is there anybody that you look at and go, that's the person that I want to be able to take on in this cage? Kana Watanabe has earned the right to fight here again. I want to see her back in the cage and I want to do it in Japan. Sounds good to me. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the world champion, Liz Carmouche.